Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be dedicating this video to tell you guys what to expect in an apprenticeship, specifically going through my experience doing a level three digital marketing qualification. But before I get into this, make sure you subscribe to my channel right now. Don't even think about not doing it. Why does the household need to start drying their hair right now when I just started the video? But the show must go on, so I'm gonna carry on and hopefully they're gonna stop drying their hair. For those of you who don't know, an apprenticeship is basically a really great combination of working in a workplace environment full time alongside studying towards a qualification. So in my case, my placement, so to speak, has been at Google. It's been a 15 month program and my qualification that I've been studying alongside of it has been a level three digital marketing qualification and that was run by a company known as White Hat. Now they've changed their, they rebranded and changed their name to Multiverse. I will put the link down in the description. So what happened when I began, I got given a now known Multiverse coach and they're a specialist in digital marketing. They've been doing marketing for years and now they're there to coach me, myself and other apprentices within my cohort at Google. They're there as one-on-one -on -one and it's been really, really great because I've been able to communicate with them whenever I want by email, give them a call. We made a WhatsApp group chat and it's just a really open and honest communication. Whenever I'm stuck on anything, have any questions regarding my workplace, regarding my qualification, the studying part, but also personal life if I'm struggling or going or anything is kind of going on in life and they are truly there to support you. So that's really, really good besides also having your manager and your mentor who are Googlers and work at Google as well alongside that. So you kind of have three people as a bubble around you if you ever need. So when I started the apprenticeship, I had an intense one week boot camp, and this took place in WeWork, a WeWork building with my white hat coach. And it was like an intense Monday to Friday, nine hours a day going through kind of the fundamentals of digital marketing just so when I start my actual hands on deck workplace, I'm kind of going there with some form of knowledge within marketing. And how the structure usually works is once a month around that, your white hat coach or even multiverse coach now known as, they will come into the Google office or in your apprenticeship office and they will teach you a module. Or you will be going to another building, so some of our sessions were done at WeWork or other buildings in London or wherever you're based and they will teach you modules. So some examples of modules were marketing principles, market segmentation, social media marketing, relationship marketing, and it's often one module once a month. And then once those modules are completed, what they do is they kind of set you assignments, which you kind of take the learnings that you've had in that session, um, do further research on it, and then complete the activities and send it back to them for grading. Then around, halfway I'd say about the six month mark you tend to have two exams um, again I'm only speaking about the level three digital marketing qualification if you did level four it might be a little different but in my one specifically with multiverse there was two exams I had to do halfway through the first one was to do with um, all the marketing modules that I had studied to date with with the white hat coaching in my spare time and then the second exam was a coding one basically so what happened was everything I did in that boot camp when I started the Google apprenticeship and all the modules that I got taught it was all kind of put into an exam that I did and then you have to pass that in order to continue and then the second one which was the coding one you actually had a one week long boot camp on coding yes it might not necessarily be totally about marketing and related to it however it's a really good skill to have especially nowadays and i really recommend you taking on training there's loads of free ones online and paid ones that you can take part in within that boot camp in coding we had someone i think it was a we work coach and they basically went through all the fundamentals looking at javascript and all the different coding languages python getting some understanding about the terminology then we put it into practice and then finally each apprentice were able to build their own website completely created by code and by yourself. So it was a huge achievement and definitely worth it. And then the exam was kind of based on that whole week of learning and some more theory work that you kind of had to do on the side yourself. And then you pass those two and then you move on. 
Then the further you get to the end, further end of the apprenticeship, so the second half, the more, I guess, stressful it can get. It's still a matter of being really good with your time and being able to complete your work and be on track in order to not feel overwhelmed. But the hefty part I'd say happens on the second half. What basically happens, what basically happens is you need to submit a portfolio. And the portfolio, there's not a limit of how many pages it needs to be, but essentially, it's a collection of all the key big projects that you've worked on at Google or whatever company you're doing the apprenticeship at. So it could be um, all the big ones you worked on, but these are all goes against about, I don't really know how many, 12 to 15, 16 competencies. So for instance, um, collaboration, communication, these are more softer skill competencies, but then there's more hard skills, so actual um, implementation. So they wanna see you build campaigns, analytics, so track the performance of a campaign you've done, and then how you've maybe scaled it, how you communicated this with your team, um, the learnings you got from it, and there's loads of competencies that you basically have to hit. You know what? I had to stop recording because someone called me. Now I have no idea where I left off. Um, portfolios. Part two. So as I was saying, you have a collection of projects that you've worked on and you write about them. What the project was, what was the task, what was the aim, who did you work with, what did you do specifically? Um, and then you back it up with actual results. So what were the results? Can you back it up with data? How, did you use this data to create graphs, charts? Did you present it to anyone? Blah, 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 blah. So you kind of do that, build a really big portfolio throughout the 15 months, 18 months, however long the apprenticeship is. And then you submit this to BCS, who's the exam board. So for instance, you know how I'm talking, I, I, I've been brought up in the UK, so um, I don't know if you're watching from the US or other parts of the world, it might be different, but we have GCSEs and A-levels, which kind of take place before you go to university. And the exams you do, they're often from an exam board like AQA or NXL or OKR. For this apprenticeship, my exam board, so to speak, was BCS. It's like a IT institute, institution. And so I submit that portfolio to them. Then about three months before the end of your apprenticeship, you have something called a synoptic project. This is essentially a week where you're not supposed to be working. So I didn't work. So instead of booking time, you technically book time off as if it's vacation holiday period, but you don't because it's part of your apprenticeship. Um, but I wasn't working. So I put my laptop to the side, fully dedicated for the synoptic project. The exam board, so BCS, they give you an option of like three or four projects or briefs even that you can pick from. So I picked one for instance, and then on the day, so say they, they say to you, you start next Monday and you have to submit it by Friday, 5 p.m. On Monday, you receive the brief and loads of other like information, data packs that you might need in order to kind of solve it and also put your own edge to it and, your, and kind of tick off the requirements that need to be met. They do this in order to make sure that they're actually assessing your ability to work under pressure, under time condition on, and something that they've set you and you, your manager, your mentor at work, you will sign something declaring that none of them are helping you with this and this is so solely your work. So that alongside your portfolio all goes back to BCS, the exam board. And then finally, nearer to the end of the apprenticeship, BCS sets you an interview, it's called EPA which stands for Endpoint Assessment. And essentially it's up to two hours long. Mine was about an hour and a half, a bit more than that, about maximum two hours long. It's an exam board person, um, an invigilator, mm, not really an invigilator, but a interviewer basically from BCS. So they don't know you, they don't work with you at Google. They're there on an interview. Mine was virtual due to COVID, but they can ask you any questions, any questions about the projects you put in your portfolio and um, anything about the Synoptic project you've done because they will receive these. And then based on the performance of your interview, they grade you. So you could fail, get a pass, a merit or a distinction. And it was a really hard interview. But as long as you know your stuff and, and you basically excel, really understand the business, the company you work for, they asked me about Google. Like, do I really understand what Google does, the, the organization I'm in? 
specifically in the marketing department, what I do, what my team does, what's my responsibility within that team X, Y, Z, they'll understand and they'll get create an image of you that you are a competent marketer. And then based on that, about two, three weeks after they tell you what grade you got. And thankfully after so much hard work, I managed to get a distinction. So I'm really happy with that. And I am going to dedicate a whole nother video about how I managed to get a distinction, sharing my advice, on trying to aim to get the highest mark possible. It is a stressful situation because you are working full time alongside it. However, it's completely doable. I managed to do it. And if I can get a distinction within marketing, I'm sure you guys can as well. And also the reason why I'm very chuffed with the distinction is it was the first time someone within marketing um, at Google managed to get a distinction. So always happy days to be the first one to, you know, knock it out the park, make history. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And I hope that was really helpful. Again, if there's any other questions you want me answer, put them in the description, not in the description, put them in the comments down below. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be posting every week on a Sunday. If you guys really want, I'll try and do twice a week, depends on how much demand there is. And, and make sure to also follow my TikTok account. I'll put that in my description below. I post every day, every single day, videos of tips and tricks for interviews, assessment centers, and kind of my knowledge. And most importantly, enjoy life, stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.